Hello, my name is Brian Johnson, and I'm a science editor with World Book Encyclopedia. I'm here to talk about Enantiornis. Enantiornis was a large bird that lived about 70 million years ago. It may have looked much like a turkey vulture, though there were some differences. Most obviously, Enantiornis had teeth in its bill and claws on its wings, like many other birds from the age of dinosaurs. Many people are aware of Archaeopteryx, which lived about 150 million years ago. Most scientists identify Archaeopteryx as the oldest known bird, though some think it may actually be a closely related dinosaur instead. For many years, scientists knew of only a few other birds from the time of dinosaurs. The main reason is that bird remains form fossils even less often than most other animals, because most birds are small and delicate with hollow bones. But in recent years, Scientists have made fossil discoveries that show the Cretaceous period, which lasted from about 145 million to 65 million years ago, was a golden age for birds. The birds that lived after Archaeopteryx developed into many new forms, and they spread to a variety of habitats. We rarely consider the fact that birds live for close to 100 million years side by side with other dinosaurs. By comparison, only about 65 million years have passed since the dinosaurs became extinct. So birds live longer in the age of dinosaurs than they have in the age of mammals. During the time of the dinosaurs, birds changed in many ways. The most important developments were improvements in their ability to fly. For example, Enantiornis was a much stronger flyer than Archaeopteryx, largely because of changes in its skeleton. Enantiornis could fold its wings, and flap them with much greater strength than Archaeopteryx. And Antiornis did not have the same long, bony tail. Instead, it had a short tail, with several bones fused together to form what is known as a pygostyle. The pygostyle anchors tail feathers, enabling improved control and efficiency in flight. Other bones of an Antiornis were also fused, making its body more rigid. A rigid body is stronger but lighter, helping birds to fly. Enantiornis is only one member of the Enantiornithines, the most diverse group of birds from the Cretaceous period. Scientists have recovered fossils of more than a dozen kinds of Enantiornithine birds. Most still had teeth and claws on their wings, but a few lacked them. Some of these birds probably look very much like birds today. There were other groups of birds that lived in the Cretaceous period, apart from the Enantiornithines. For example, Ichthyornis and its relatives looked much like gulls, though they had teeth. Ichthyornis lived around the great inland sea that once covered much of North America. Hesperornis and its relatives were flightless birds that dived to hunt. Hesperornis could reach up to about six feet long, or about two meters. Incredibly, none of these birds are considered ancestors of modern birds. When scientists speak of modern birds, they do not mean birds that are alive today. Rather, they're referring to a specific group of birds they call neornithes, a word that means new birds. The earliest known fossils of these birds come from the late Cretaceous period, but they probably appeared earlier. The neornithes are important for several reasons. They had developed new adaptations for improved flight, including skeletons with more fused bones than are found in an antiornis. But the most significant thing about the Neornithes is that they were the only group of birds to survive the mass extinction at the end of the Cretaceous period, about 65 million years ago. This event devastated life on Earth. Most famously, it wiped out all the dinosaurs, except for certain birds. Now, people often say that birds were the only dinosaurs to survive the mass extinction, but that's somewhat misleading. Most birds actually died out with the other dinosaurs. In fact, some scientists estimate that about 90% of birds became extinct. All the Enantiornithines died out, Hesperornis and its relatives died out, Ichthyornis and its relatives also became extinct. Only modern birds survived the mass extinction. Much of the diversity that had developed among birds over the previous 100 million years of evolution was lost. Scientists did not know why modern birds survived and other birds died out. For that matter, it's not clear why small feathered dinosaurs that were close relatives of birds also became extinct. 
Perhaps many modern birds lived in freshwater areas, which seemed to offer some protection from the devastation. Animals that lived in such areas appear to have suffered fewer extinctions than animals elsewhere. And indeed, evidence suggests that waterfowl had already developed by then. Perhaps the diet of the modern birds that survived consisted of seeds or aquatic detritus, which would have remained available long after most plants had died. Or maybe the improved flying ability of modern birds had something to do with their survival. However they survived, modern birds were great benefactors of the mass extinction. As the world began to recover, modern birds evolved into many new forms, which spread all around the world. Today, more than half of living bird species are perching birds, many of which weigh only a few grams, or less than an ounce. Others are mighty birds of prey, such as the large eagles and vultures that are like an antiornis in some ways. Scientists continue to hunt for fossils of birds from the age of dinosaurs. With each new find, they add to a remarkable story of survival and change.